They say pride comes before the fall, man, and he literally fell to the death. If you need to do something that extreme to feel alive, let somebody punch you in the face, and then you'll feel the pain to know that you're alive. What is wrong with you? Imagine if you catch a cramp up there, bro. Imagine if you catch a cramp up there, you are dead. She tried to maintain her grip, but accidentally grabbed a high voltage cable and shooted oh! herself. Turn it up, Boom. turn it up, turn it up, turn it up. Yeah! Yup, <laughs> we are back. Welcome back, Dukes and Duke Guess. It's your man at the Ed. It's Eddie Ed TV. Back with another reaction. We got some dumb ways to die again. Another dumb ways to die. I know y'all probably missed a thousand ways to die, but listen. Last week, I got multiple videos blocked. Totally blocked. You know what? Maybe I should show you guys what I'm talking about. Because I don't think you guys believe me when I say videos get blocked. Okay. So, look at this video right here. The uh, These are the best burgers in the world, right? Uploaded last week, February 20th. You see it? It's totally blocked, guys. This video contains copyrighted material. Okay. As a result, it has been blocked worldwide. It's totally blocked, guys. Not even a little bit. Then, if you, if you go up earlier... This one is partially blocked, so it can have some visibility. But also, as well as it gets blocked, it gets demonetized too. And then this one is totally blocked as well. Anyways, it was another, um, it was a very good video too. It was one where it was extreme cheapskates. And this lady was crazy with her stuff. And it was blocked. Totally blocked. Now, imagine just working... For 4 to 10 hours. Anywhere between 4 to 10 hours of work. And after you get done working. They're like. You know what. Everything that you just did. Is. Not going to count no more. Yeah we're just going to reset it. We're just going to not pay you for it. And it's just going to be a blank day. That's basically what happened. So it's very frustrating. Um. To when that happens, but it happened. Um, <clears throat> but nevertheless, let's go to the video we're doing today. The dumbest ways people actually die. You already know it's gonna be dumb. Is it gonna be funny? We'll see. Let's hop straight into it. Eddie Ed T. V. Known to his many followers as Remy Enigma, okay, a you, French photographer named Remy Lucidi rose to fame crazy, on social son. media for scale. Real quick, imagine if you catch a cramp up there, bro. Imagine if you catch a cramp up there, you are dead, bro. But look at this guy, man. This guy is crazy. Like, I, I definitely wouldn't do this because of cramps. And if you miss a step, like, and then you post, and then plus, just fatigue, just regular fatigue, man. Just getting tired, that is a, a hard possibility, man. Just getting, just off of just getting tired. Let me make sure my mic is connected. Ailing tall buildings and other high fixtures around the world. For anyone with a fear of heights, his content was nothing short of oh, downright I'm, terrifying. I'm fear of, I fear but heights. He received a lot of admiration and respect for his work including the jaw-dropping photos he captured thanks to his willingness to climb dangerously high structures. Crazy, bro. During a recent trip to Hong Kong in July 2023, Remy tragically fell from the top of the 68-story Tregunta Tower and plummeted to his death. Of course he did. While there are many questions surrounding his death, it's believed that Remy got trapped outside a top-floor penthouse and either slipped, losing his footing, or got too tired to keep hanging on while he waited for help. Probably did get Remy too tired. Remy wasn't even supposed to be at the building in the first place. He was given access to the property by telling a doorman he was there to visit someone living on the 40th floor. The person he claimed he was there to see has since clarified that they didn't know the daredevil at all. Surveillance video showed Remy getting off an elevator on the 49th floor and going to the top of the 721-foot building. To get outside, he forced open a door, and when he somehow got trapped, he knocked on the window of a penthouse he was cleaning inside. 
The housekeeper immediately called the police, but Remy had already fallen by the time officers got to the scene. Lucidi's death is tragic, but he also knowingly risked his life countless times. No matter how skilled someone is at climbing, it only takes a split second for someone to fall. 8. Fake Butt Injunctions 46-year-old Maria Booty. Olivia Castillo passed away in 2005 thanks to a fat blockage caused Dude. by what she thought were French polymer injections. Their purpose was to reduce wrinkles in her butt. She received the treatment in California from a woman named Martha Mata Vasquez, a 39-year-old former beautician who offered to do the procedure for people who were considering going to Mexico where it was much cheaper. What they didn't know is that Vasquez was actually injecting them with Mazola corn oil and that wow. she wasn't licensed to perform cosmetic injections at all. On top of Castillo's death, similar injections put another patient into a coma and caused medical issues for others, according to prosecutors. They accused the woman of continuing to perform the procedure even after learning that some of her clients had gotten sick charging $1,400 a piece for each injection. Bags. Decided to plead guilty to involuntary manslaughter and received a 15-year prison sentence. She better get out of here. At her sentencing, she apologized to her family, her victims, and their families. Man, her lawyer, Tom that. Worthington, made claims that Castillo was unaware the injections were dangerous. He said that, if oh. anything, she was simply guilty of negligent conduct, not intent to kill, and that the sentence was way too harsh. The case sheds light on the ongoing issue of illegal cosmetic injections and surgeries done in the US. Tempted by lower prices offered by the unlicensed practitioners, many take their risks either knowingly or without looking into the program. See, this is why y'all can't be tempted by social media stuff, man. The social media with the ladies, we already know this is out there. They're going to make you think you got to have a big booty and go get one. Don't go to the doctors to get injected. They're going to make you feel like you have to. Don't do it, man. I'm telling you, they, they're going to switch up the trend. It's going to be something new. Nobody's going to like this in 10 years or whatever. It's not going to be a big thing. Stop following the wave so hard, man, and ruining your life to do so. Let's get back to the video, man. This is ridiculous. Spider's credentials. But as the saying goes, if it seems too good to be true, it probably is. 7. Killer Karma on a Saturday night in August 2022, a young man brutally stabbed a 37-year-old woman what? and her teen daughter right outside their house in Fukuoka, Japan. Mm. The victims were arriving home at about 10 o'clock p.m. when they saw the man leaving through the front door. He immediately charged at the mother and daughter, stabbing them both in the stomach before dropping the knife and fleeing the scene on foot. A nearby witness called for help and emergency responders discovered the victims covered in blood and clinging to life. The women were immediately rushed to the hospital where their conditions luckily stabilized. Wow. About a half hour after the attack and less than 2,000 feet from where the stabbing took place, the suspect was fatally hit by a train. DNA testing confirmed the man's identity and his ID was located inside the victim's home where he broke into wow. earlier that night. The suspect was a student from Tokyo well, that met the that. daughter through a social app. When the young woman stopped talking to the stranger online, he tracked her down through a GPS feature on the app. The attack wow. came during a noticeable spike in criminals targeting victims they met online, according to police data. Public officials have since stepped up their efforts to educate the public on this new type of stranger danger that's often at the center of violent attacks and similar crimes like stalking and harassment. While it's not entirely clear how or why the man got hit by a train, many people saw the outcome of the situation as karmic justice, while some may have even considered it well-deserved. 6. A Playing with Electricity Infamously dubbed the Arken Strangler, a German serial killer named Egidius Schiffer yeah, was like sentenced to life in prison face. in 2008 for killing five... He has no remorse in his eyeballs, bro. His eyes tell it all, man. He looked like he's He's sick. Hitchhikers between the years 1983 to 1990. He was discovered dead in his cell in 2018 oh, with a him. live electrical cord wrapped around his intimates. An autopsy concluded that the 62-year-old died from heart failure resulting from the electric current. 
Schiffer had removed the cord from a lamp in his cell, stuck the end of it into a nearby wall socket, and used it as a strange source of pleasure. The shocks were too strong, though, and his body couldn't actually handle the amount of live electricity flowing through it. It's fair to wonder if Schiffer's mental health had reached a low point. After all, he was not only sentenced to spend the rest of his life behind bars, he'd already spent almost the entire eight years leading up to his death in solitary confinement, all alone. Oh, Investigators yeah, he was considered every possible angle he and was ultimately concluded that Schiffer's death was an accident. 5. Rock climbing without gear. Ooh, Free climbing see, is a Okay, any type of climbing, man, any type of climbing, you gotta make sure you are in a safe zone or something especially rock climbing that that you gotta be harnessed up to the max because i'm not going rock climbing for free and free fall rock climb whatever you call it that don't have harnesses i'm not doing that because when you fall you fall and you know how hard it is to rock climb you know how tired you get trying to grab something but you gotta grab it till you get to the top because if you decide yeah i'm gonna take a break you're gonna take a tumble so yeah, I just know that just based off of just work, it's going to take a lot of energy and you can't you can't give up during it because if you give up, you, you're going to fall down to your to your injury or death. You have to be harnessed up. I don't know why people go out and do these dangerous things, testing their 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 limits. You could test your limits. You don't got to make sure you die after during your test. Do it where you can live. I, just, I don't know, man. Exactly what it sounds like. It's rock climbing without the use of ropes, harnesses, or other safety equipment that most people would use to avoid falling to their death. One of the most prolific free climbers in the world was the late Austin Howell, who shocked even the most experienced climbers in his field with the risks he was willing to take. On the one hand, there's no denying Howell was one of the most accomplished and skilled climbers in the world, scaling peaks and cliffs that many would be lucky to climb with gear. But just one slight misstep or loss of control, and it could be line sound for him. And sadly, that's what happened to Howell in 2019, when he plummeted 80 feet to his death from Shortoff Mountain in Burke County, North Carolina. County officials described the area of the mountain Howell fell from as one of the most difficult portions of the peak. The climber fell into a region that was hard to get to, and by the time emergency responders located him, he was already dead. Yeah. Howell experienced a close call 11 years prior in 2008 when he started to struggle on an indoor rock wall. His belayer accidentally let go of the brake rope and Howell came crashing 35 feet to the ground. After that, he broke three vertebrae and several bones Look at and this. it took months for him to finally recover. All things considered though, Howell was well aware of the risks involved with free climbing and he took them all knowingly. While some believe the climbers get overconfident about their ability to avoid disaster, the plain and simple truth is that these athletes pride comes before the fall, man, and he literally fell to the death. But that's what it is. Like, you know, when you get prideful, you're definitely not really estimating the situation with a with a level head. You know, you're thinking, yeah, it doesn't matter what the obstacle is, you're just gonna jump over it. No. Like that, like with people that go in cages with lions and tigers and all them wild exotic animals, you you tripping. People that do this type of stuff, yeah, I can do this without any safety, whatever, or skydive and and let the parachute go at the last thousand whatever feet. That's too low, or whatever it is, bro. You got it. You once once you get to that prideful head space, you you then start to do the most un unsensible stuff man uh yeah just passionate about their sport and if they want to do something that seems crazy there's likely no talking them out of it four subway surfing subway surfing standing on top of moving subway cars has strangely become popular among teens over recent years and the problem's only getting worse thanks to social media Simply put, it's an extremely dangerous activity. Extremely. A lot of young people have died doing it, and these tragedies fail to serve as warnings because teens often feel invincible or fail to consider the potential consequences of their choices. Man. 
In one of the most recent subway surfing accidents in the United States, a young man named J. Thiran Rayapurabam passed away in an incident along Washington, D.C.'s metro rail system. Dang it. His body was located alongside the tracks at the Rhode Island Avenue station. Just a few moments before his death, Jay was filming himself happily as he rode on top of the train. A closer look at his online and phone activity revealed that he expressed huge adoration for other young subway surfers, to the point of idolizing these youths. In one exchange, Jay praised a popular subway surfer from New York City in a text message, New York. saying that he knew the activity was dangerous, but it was the only time he felt alive. Ironically, Listen, achieving if you need to do something that extreme to feel alive, let somebody punch you in the face and then you'll feel the pain to know that you're alive. What is wrong with you? Why you need to almost die to feel alive? I don't, bro, what thrill? See, that's what's crazy. If you're chasing a thrill, you're going to chase the craziest thing and the most dangerous thing because just like when people do the drugs, after a while, the same level is not going to give you the same high you're looking for. You need a different level. And a different level in the high, and then all of a sudden you're doing all these spiked, enhanced versions of the drug, and, and, and now you're about to die. Now your heart is beating a thousand rabbits per second. And, you, and you're like, oh, your chest, your chest hurt, your chest hurt. Of course it's going to hurt. You're killing yourself. So when you're chasing thrills like that, it's a, you, you, you're entering into a dangerous zone from the thought. As soon as you think it, it's, it's, it's already, you're, you're already entered into a danger zone. Like you, like, you shouldn't even be thinking about doing it, you know? Once you do that, and, and you let it stay in your, okay, now you now you working your way to that point. And I just don't, why do you need to do this to feel alive? There, should, there has to be something more, much more safe and simple. Obviously, what do y'all think? Drop the thoughts in the comments, man. This is, this is getting dumber. That feeling was the reason the young man lost his life. His parents later revealed that their son's behavior had become more risky and troubled leading up to his death. Therapy was ineffective, and like many other teens, Jay placed a high level of importance on achieving internet fame. Jay's dad, Washington Post editor Desikan Thayernapam, called for more to be done Dang. to stop teens from dying in these sub- That's a long last name, but see, here, here's another point too. People always try to do stuff for, for fame, man. You will die trying to be famous. You will like do anything to try to go viral or famous. It's not worth you losing life for that, man. Like, bro, don't y'all want to live and take care of, like, do you want to get to the money or you want to get to everybody liking you? I'm trying to get to the money. Forget whoever liked me or not. That's not, that's not going to give me money. That's not going to get me to a place where I don't got to worry about the next month or the next year. As far as what, I, what, what I'm going to need for my family, that's not going to do it. I need the bag. Okay? Now, I'm not going to do something crazy like that to get the bag. But... I'm not doing this. I wouldn't do anything crazy like this just to get social media fame. And, you know, it's not worth it, bro. If it costs your life, bro, don't even look at it. Way surfing accidents. The young man's mother, Vaishali Honawa, expressed similar sentiments. She said there are limits on what parents can do to stop these tragedies and that social media platforms have a responsibility to take down subway surfing videos. Honowa also begged transit companies to step up and help do their part to stop the problem. Unfortunately, even when subway surfing videos are taken down from social media, the dangerous hobby only seems to be getting more popular. It would be great if telling young people about the dangers were enough to stop them, but there are clearly no easy answers to getting the point across effectively. 3. Being clumsy During a tour in Sydney during 2014, a world-renowned American hypnotist named Dr. Scott Lewis somehow fell off the balcony of the 11-story apartment he was staying in to his death. The 50-year-old crash-landed on the fourth-floor balcony of another apartment unit, bringing his life and career to an unexpected end. A sold-out performance at the Sydney Opera House had to be cancelled, and police immediately got to work investigating the mysterious tragedy. 
It was clear that Lewis died from falling six stories, and authorities didn't suspect foul play, but nobody understood how or why it happened in the first place. One theory suggested Lewis was climbing between balconies, lost his footing, and accidentally fell. If this was the case, it would certainly qualify as a reckless and arguably stupid way to die. The late hypnotist friend, Mark Kornhauser, told the Sydney Morning Herald that he thinks Lewis just fell over the balcony railing. He described his friend of 20 years as clumsy, with a habit of stumbling into things, but also as a timid and very cautious person. In other words, Lewis wouldn't have climbed between balconies voluntarily, and he definitely wouldn't have jumped on purpose. Unfortunately, the circumstances around Lewis's last moments will probably always be shrouded in mystery, but a tragic loss of balance is the most likely explanation. 2. Hiking Drunk In July 2023, 41-year-old oh Gerardo Hernandez Rodriguez and his wife spent a Saturday afternoon at Oregon's Multnomah Falls with their five kids. While hiking on an embankment running along the Columbia River Highway, Gerardo slipped and fell 200 feet down to his death. Unable to see where he landed, the family instantly called 911. Emergency responders found Gerardo about 45 minutes later, but it was already too late to save him. According to authorities, alcohol impairment was a factor in Gerardo's death. At While least he there's didn't a good chance it. he may have fallen even if he was sober, it's probably not the smartest idea to hike along a potentially dangerous trail while under the influence. The tragedy happened just days before the 4th of July, and the park was busy as vacationers came to celebrate the holiday. Other park goers were shaken by Gerardo's death, and some were even afraid to hike along the trail he'd fallen from. Less than a year before, a 62-year-old woman fell in the same spot while hiking with friends and died due to a brain injury. If nothing else, these tragedies should serve as a cautionary tale about how, at the end of the day, humans' fates are left to nature's mercy. 1. Death by Selfie When the selfie era selfie. began, it quickly became clear that taking a photo of yourself can be a lot riskier than it seems. Hundreds of people, maybe more, have died taking selfies, and the number just keeps growing. Sometimes, a simple moment of distraction is to blame, while other tragedies sprout from people doing dangerous things to get the perfect shot. A young Russian woman named Zenia Inyanyeva put herself in harm's way back in 2014 when she climbed a 30-foot bridge in the city of St. Petersburg for a photo opportunity. The amateur photographer scaled the structure during the night while a friend waited on the ground below. At some point, Zenia started to lose her balance. She tried to maintain her grip, but accidentally grabbed a high-voltage cable and oh! electrocuted herself in the process. Oh, Zenia fell Lord. and landed on the rough concrete below. Yee. Her friend rushed over, but was paralyzed by shock and didn't know how to react to the situation. Emergency responders arrived and found the young woman sitting next to Zenia who died from her injuries. The tragedy raised questions about young people's affinity for exploring and taking pictures of train tracks. Psychologist Martin Voigt told the Mirror that railway tracks have an aspect of danger to them, and that this is perhaps what attracts people to them. But as this and other tragedies reveal, sometimes it's best to admire something from a distance. Thanks for watching. Getting people to <clears throat> This was crazy. Dumbest ways to die, obviously. Some of them were it seemed like more like accidental type of you know esque. But others like bro, if you do that, obviously there's a lot of danger behind what you did. Like the the rock climbing one, climbing a mountain free freelancing. If you slip, it's it. You're done. You know? Uh the 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 train, the train one. The train one is just so many ways you could die. You could fall through the subway, uh, you know, what do you call them? I'm doing ESL charades. Um, the subway divisions, like the different pods, you can fall between there and then fall down into the thing. You can fall off. You could get, you could get your head decapitated from that last video. Uh, you could just fall off of the side to where 
um the 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 train is going fast and you just hit your head and and die there's so many different ways you can kill yourself you know and why do you the question is what is so boring about your life that you got to do something this dangerous to have a thrill or what aren't you exposed to to give you a thrill like these extreme activities has got to be the last resort of the last like there's so many things you can do that is fun and exciting and thrilling that don't involve you almost dying trying to do the thrill or the thing that gives you the thrill like we got to do some some safe activities rather than being wild trying to do something that's that's cool and then, and then plus the dude was doing it for fame man and that's where like what when your head is not straight and when you're not thinking about doing things for the right reason that's when you start doing stuff that you normally probably wouldn't do if the reason you were doing it for was not there like if if there was no social media people wouldn't think about doing crazy stuff to go viral and be famous you know they'll think about getting on tv and doing some other stuff but just it's just opportunity for stupidity uh don't be out there doing dumb stuff to, to catch it on camera especially when it affects your health your your life if it hurts you in any way you gotta chill out with it you know so those are my thoughts on it drop in the comments what your dumbest one was or what you think the dumbest one was and i'll drop mine in there as well uh the dumbest one i think is is the train one la the rock climbing the rock climbing that's mine i said he had tv catch you guys next video peace <laughs>